In this lesson, we'll fly a full VOR approach with a procedure turn. Before we begin, you'll need to refer to the Everett Washington VOR approach plate to see how we'll fly this instrument approach. You must also make sure to read the ground school session on instrument approaches, otherwise your brain is sure to be rattled with terms and concepts you haven't yet heard. On the upper left-hand side of the instrument panel, next to the airspeed indicator, you'll find your next best friend, and that's called the clock. When you found it, click the select button. This calls up the stopwatch function. Most holding patterns are based on time, so a good stopwatch is essential. Clicking the control button starts the stopwatch. It counts up in seconds, minutes, and hours. Clicking it again stops it, and the third time will reset it back to zero so it's ready to be used again. You're going to be very busy during an instrument approach, so it's important to have as much done as possible as early as possible. Long before I get this close to the airport, I've checked the ATIS, fished out the correct approach chart, verified that it's the correct approach chart, stowed the coffee jug, tuned and verified the radios, and mentally reviewed the entire approach. First, let's take a look at the approach plate and brief ourselves on this approach. We'll be coming in from the west, heading towards Payne VOR. We're assuming ATC has cleared us for the approach from this position, and we'll have to fly the approach using our own navigation. In other words, no radar vectors for help. When we cross Payne VOR, We'll turn left to a heading of 340 degrees and rotate the OBS to 340 degrees to track outbound on the 340 degree course from the station. We'll also descend to 2,000 feet as shown in the chart's profile view. We'll fly outbound until the DME reads 6 miles, which keeps us within the procedure turn limit of 10 miles from the VOR. Then we'll turn left to 295 degrees as part of the procedure turn's barb-type course reversal. We'll also rotate the OBS and set the inbound course of 160 degrees. Don't turn the OBS to 160 degrees yet. I'll tell you when it's time. After one minute at 295 degrees, we'll turn right to a heading of 115 degrees and intercept the 160 degree course inbound, otherwise known as our final approach course. Once established inbound on the 160 degree course to the station, we'll descend to a circling minimum descent altitude of 1,060 feet and wait for the VOR to from indicator to indicate from. This is the missed approach point. If we haven't seen the runway by then, we'll execute the missed approach. We'll want to get to our minimum descent altitude as soon as we can, safely. And we can't do that until we're established on the inbound course. So let's get established as soon as possible. OK, let's see how this is done in the air. We're just west of the Payne VOR. We're inbound to the station on the 090 degree course, also known as the 270 degree radial, and we're at 3,000 feet. ATC has just cleared us for the VOR Bravo approach, and we're to maintain 3,000 feet until crossing Payne VOR. Right now, on the top of the VOR indicator, I want you to click the knob marked OBS to rotate the dial until 340 degrees is at the top of the dial. There, the VOR needle shows that we've crossed the station. Turn left now to a heading of 340 degrees and fly to the point where we'll begin the bob portion of the procedure turn.
Turn slightly to intercept and track the 340 degree course outbound and mark the time. Now is also a good time to begin your descent to 2,000 feet and reduce your speed to 90 knots. Don't worry about descending at a specific rate. Just get the power back to about 1,600 RPM and adjust your pitch to maintain 90 knots. We want to stay within 10 nautical miles of the VOR, so we leave plenty of time to make the procedure turn within 10 miles. When the DME reads six miles, we'll fly the 45-180 barb portion of the procedure turn. There, the DME reads six miles, so let's begin the barb portion of this procedure turn by turning left to a heading of 295 degrees and fly outbound for one minute. When you roll outbound on a heading of 295 degrees, mark the time. We've been outbound for one minute, so let's turn right to a heading of 115 degrees to intercept the 160 degree course inbound to the VOR.
you're too high, descend. Set your NAV1 OBS to 160 degrees. Set OBS 1. Okay, we're intercepting the 160 degree course inbound, so turn to a heading of 160 degrees. Intercept and fly that course inbound. Begin a descent to 1,060 feet. This is our minimum descent altitude, or MDA. Maintain an approach speed of 90 knots. I know from the airport diagram that the VOR is east of runway 16 right, so we'll be looking mostly to our right for the approach lights. Make small corrections to maintain altitude and to keep the VOR1 vertical needle centered. Don't go below 1,060 feet until the runway is in sight. If we can't see the runway by the time we get to the VOR, then we'll execute the missed approach. I think I see the runway at about 1 o'clock. Yes, I have the runway at 2 o'clock. Before landing checklist is complete. We're cleared to land on runway 16 right, Captain. Be sure to stay on the Poppy's glide slope.
slow down. As a good educational aid, why don't you check out the flight analysis while I go park the airplane? 